child for seven years afterwards let God or devil take the child they cannot change my child because our education so powerful a gift for you. Thank you, Grandpa. Mm. Uh, Dad wants to speak to you. Hi, Dad. How are you? Thanks. When are you coming? Okay, Dad. Bye. Come with me, Grandpa. Sure, Sundar. Let's go. Can you guess what my birthday resolution is? Hmm. Are you going to spend more time watching cartoon channels? No, Grandpa. Stop kidding me. I am no hmm. more a kid now. I have decided to teach two poor children living near our home. This is what my birthday resolution is. Sundar, that's really great. Really great indeed. Is this the idea from Dr. Kalam's Ten Commandments? Yes, of course. He is my role model. How do you find time for this? After the school hours, I'll spend an hour every evening to teach them. They'll hmm. come to our home. Please keep this to yourself, Grandpa. I want to give Mom a surprise. Is it? Okay, okay. But why don't you email the president, informing him about your birthday resolution? Oh, that's really a great idea. But I don't have his email ID. I will tell you. Go to his website www.thepresidentofindia.nic.in Let me do that. Here is his email ID. What should I write? You simply write about your birthday resolution that you are going to teach two poor children from tomorrow. Okay. Sundar, what's happening here? Mom, I've started teaching Lakshmi and Muthu. They are not going to school because their parents are very poor. First, you do your own homework. Instead of concentrating on your studies, you're setting up a school in the house. Have you forgotten that your rank has come down from first to fifth? If you do all this and waste your time, you'll end up being last in class. No, Mom. How can you say that? 
I'll get my first rank again. But I'll teach Lakshmi and Muthu too. This is my birthday resolution, which I did not tell you yesterday. But Grandpa knows this. I know what you can do and what you cannot. You first listen to me. I know when to allow you to teach others. Please do what I say and finish your homework and show me the diary for the day. Children, come. Now go home. Your parents must be searching for you. No, mom. Their parents know that they are here, and I am teaching them. Please, mom, call them back. Sundar, whatever is your problem, you should not show your anger by not eating. Uh, whatever it is, we can always discuss about it. Please have your food. Ah, Sundar, after finishing your food, come to the terrace. Okay. Hmm? Sundar, please tell me what's your problem. It's all because of what Mummy did in the evening. You know my birthday resolution to teach two poor children. Of course, it is one of the ten commandments from Dr. Kalam. Yes, I asked Lakshmi and Muthu to come to our home this evening. I was teaching them the alphabets when mummy came from outside she saw us and got angry she sent the children back i felt insulted please don't get upset sundar if you want to do something meaningful you have to face many hurdles you know i have already sent an email to the president dr kalam what will he think of me if i don't keep up my promise i can't understand why mummy doesn't allow me to keep up my promise does mummy know that you have made a promise to the president no that's it she gets worried that you will neglect your own studies by teaching the children when we have to do something different or great we have to cross many hurdles no one becomes great just like that success doesn't come easy now You want to do something good, but faced with a challenge. Accept the challenge and prove it that you can face it. You know how your own hero, Dr. Kalam, became great as you see him now. How? I will tell you. Myself and Dr. Kalam were born in the same year, 1931, but on different dates. He was born on 15th October, and I was born on 17th September, the same year. Have you heard of Rameshwaram? Yes, I have heard of it. Dr. Kalam was born in Rameshwaram, a holy place with a big temple. Dr Kalam's father was a boat maker in the street where they lived there is an old mosque Abdul Kalam's father used to take young Kalam to this mosque for prayer every evening young Kalam firmly believed that god listens to every prayer of ours this is the house where kalam was born and grew up his father's name was ap jainul abdin narakay His mother's name was Aisha Mart. In this rather small room, some of the objects like T square that he has used during his college days have been preserved in this room. From his early childhood, Kalam had an inquisitive mind and natural interest in research. His elder brother lives in this house. In the village, that is our cat. Cat ki mother le kolandey aga porakiru re intandi da. நாங்கள் தான் அங்கே தாயார் வீட்டே பிறந்தோம் நாங்கள் ஏழு பேர் ஆறு பேர் எங்கள் தாயார் வீட்டு பிறந்திருக்கோம் 
ஒரே நபர் தான் இங்கே பிறக்கிறார் அந்த பெருமை அவர்கிட்ட ஆமாம் குடும்பத்துக்கு என்ன வேலை இருந்தாலும் செய்வார் அவர் அது அந்த மாதிரி தான் சிறு சுனிதப்பனா சம்சி மலைக்கா இருக்கிறதுக்கு அந்த பேப்பர் ஏஜென்ட் அவர் இவர் சும்மா இருக்கும்போது யாருக்காவது போ அவசியமாக போட வேண்டாம் கொண்டு போய் போடுவார் அது எந்த எதிர்பா காசிய பணத்தையும் எதிர்பார்த்து செய்யலை சகோதரங்கிற முறையில் அவர் கொண்டு போய் போட்டார் நாங்கள் நாற்பது பேர் போயிருக்கோம் நாற்பது பேருக்கு அங்கே சாப்பிட்டு விட்டு அதுக்கு மேலே இருபத்தி அஞ்சாம் தேதி அங்கே பதவி ஏற்றி அங்கே போனோம் பூரா கம்ப்ளீட்டாக நாங்கள் போன செலவு பூரா அவர் சொந்த செலவு தான் எலிமெண்ட்ரி ஸ்கூல் A sad incident happened. It affected him very much. What happened? In the classroom, Kalan used to sit together with another boy called Ramanada Shastri. Though they belonged to different religions, they were very close to each other. Because Kalan's father and Ramanada Shastri's father were close friends. The sad incident happened during this period. Ramanada Shastri's brother still remembers that incident. Kalan sir and Anna were one of the children there. ஒரே கிளாஸ்லாம் படிச்சுட்டு இருப்பாங்க அப்போ புதுசாக ஒரு டீச்சர் ஒன்று இருக்காங்க அவங்க வந்துட்டு என்னப்பா நீ முஸ்லீம் பையன் பிராமின் பையன்னு உட்காந்துருக்கு அது நீ பின்னாடி போய் உட்காரு அப்படின்னு சொல்லியிருக்கார் அவர் பின்னாடி போய் உட்காந்துட்டார் ஸ்கூல்லாம் விட்டோன்னே ரெண்டு பேரும் ரொம்ப வருத்தப்பட்டுட்டு எங்கள் ஃபாதர்கிட்ட வந்து இது மாதிரி நடந்த நிகழ்ச்சியில் சொன்னாங்க உடனே எங்கள் ஃபாதர் வந்து அந்த டீச்சரை கூப்பிட்டு கண்டித்து விட்டாங்க அதோடு அந்த ப்ராப்ளம் சால்வ் ஆகிடுச்சு I have witnessed this event when I was a young boy, 10 years old, in our house periodically. I used to see, I used to see three different unique personalities meet. Pakshi Lakshmana Swastrikal, who was the head priest of the famous Rameswaran temple and the Vedic scholar. Reverend Father Bodal, who built the first church in Rameswaran island. And my father, who was an imam in the mosque. All the three of them used to sit and discuss the island's problem and find solution. In addition, they built several religious connectivities with compassion. These connectivities quietly spread the others in the island like the fragrance from the flowers. This sight always comes to my mind whenever I discuss with people on, people on dialogue of religions. India has had this advantage of integration of minds for thousands of years. Young Kalam could read many books in a private library owned by Mr. Manikam. Did Kalam have his education only in Rameshwaram? No, no. He studied in Rameshwaram only up to the elementary school level. It was a very ordinary school. In first, uh, first class, that is when it was a uh, Rameshwaram Panchayat school, Uh, there, the teacher's name is Muthuaya. Muthuaya. He taught me, still I remember, first, when I was a five years boy, you know, first class, second class. Two years he was my teacher. But uh, if I don't go to class, he will be in my house to find out what happened, why I have not come. And uh, also my father and the teacher, they had a link. And the teacher is interested in me. So the teacher... and uh, the family connection was there is a it's a, a spiritual connection was there a good teacher gives the vision a goal in life of the student for example my teacher sivasubramani ayya in the primary school when i went reached 5th class 6th class 7th class one day he was teaching how a bird flies you know the he scientifically was explaining how a bird flies but on that day he also injected in me a dream in my life that finally i am a study something about flight science the way he taught finally i went to physics then rocket engineer uh, then i went to aeronautical engineering then became a rocket engineer because the way he taught that flight science has become my subject of learning in all the college and engineering uh, engineering colleges so it is uh, the teacher can uh, ignite the minds of the young to dream big and then become a teacher or become a engineer or become a scientist or a doctor or a pilot or going to mars all this the way the teachers give stories great stories of human beings and great great lessons he gives about the people and the events finally the students have got inspired It happened in my life.
For high school education, he went to Ramnad, also called as Ramanadapuram. The name of the school is Schwartz High School, which is now a higher secondary school. Even for his high school education, he had to leave his native place and come to Ramnad. Yes, those days there were fewer high schools. You, the youngest generation, are lucky. You have schools all around you. In Schwartz High School, Kalam discovered his guide and mentor in his teacher, Mr. Ayyadurai Solomon. His favorite place in the school was this huge banyan tree. We are really proud that we have shaped the first citizen of India. The school still has Dr. Kalam's admission and TC records. Though he came to Ramnath for education, he became homesick quite often. He missed his parents, other family members and friends very much. But his determination to study helped him to overcome this emotional turmoil. After completing his studies in Swartz High School, Ramnath, he went to St. Joseph's College, Trichy for his intermediate. It was here, at St. Joseph's College, Kalam developed his interest in physics and literature. He started reading books about space science. It's a matter of great pride that our beloved president graduated from this college and from this building behind me, the physics block. The relationship between this institution and uh, his Excellency is one of uh, mutual affection and love. Entering room number 126 of the New York Hospital, where our president was staying during his time in St. George's College. I'm happy to present to you the two personalities associated with our president. First, let me introduce Mr. T. Sambath Kumar, who was a student in this room along with president studying here way back in 1954. Now I'm happy to introduce Bharati, a physics student studying at the moment in this college, in this hostel, in the very room where our president was staying. Incidentally, the present student also is doing his physics in this college. Thank you for that. It's very wonderful to be here. It's a great historic location, as you say. While I was in college, long, long ago, while I was in college, nearly 57 years, I remember the lectures given by the highest authority of a Jesuit institution, Jesuit institution, Reverend Father Rector Kalatil of St. Joseph's College, Trichinopoly, Southern India, where I studied in college. Every week on Monday, the Father Reverend Father will take a class for an hour. He used to talk about good human beings present and the past and what makes a good human being. In this class, the Reverend Father used to give lectures on personalities such as Buddha, Lord Buddha, Confucius, Said Augustine, Khalifa Omar, Mahatma Gandhi, Einstein, Abraham Lincoln, and moral stories linked to our civilization heritage. Even though these lessons were given to me in 1950, during my college days, they inspire even today. We are actually standing at the location where we had a very grand reception for our president in December 2003. When his turn came to speak, I'm, I was so surprised when he started like this. A temple there, and a church here, and a mask in between. Fantastic!
After finishing his B.Sc. Physics in St. Joseph's College, Abdul Kalam was seriously considering his further studies in aeronautics. He joined Madras Institute of Technology for his aeronautical engineering. With his dream of becoming a big aeronautical engineer, Kalam pursued his studies with enthusiasm and commitment. After finishing his course at MIT, Kalam joined DRDO as a senior scientific assistant. He worked there for three years, then he was appointed for a new assignment in another department called Aeronautical Development Establishment. At the time of leading his team of scientists, he got an invitation from Indian Space Research Organization, also called as ISRO. Abdul Kalam was pleasantly surprised because the offer was so huge indeed. In ISRO, he met Dr. Vikram Saraboy, the father of the Indian Space Research Kalam considers Dr. Vikram Sarabhai as his guru. It is not accidental that on the soil of India, the great space powers, the United States, the USSR and France, are collaborating with us at the equatorial range near Tumba. I would like to share an experience how the religion and science came together in a big mission which I was witnessing. It was during the early 1960s. The founder of the Indian Space Research Organization, Professor Vikram Sarabhai, with his team, had located a place technically more suited for space research after considering many alternatives. The place called Tumba in Kerala, the southern part of India, was selected for space research as it was near the magnetic equator. After seeing the profile of the land and the sea coast, and the view expressed was that thousands of fishing force invoice lived there. The place had an ancient St. Mary church, a bishop's house, and a school. Hence, it would be very difficult to give this land, and they were willing to provide alternate area. However, my professor very determined. However, there was a suggestion to approach the only person who would advise the help. That was Rever Bishop Reverend Father Peter Pereira. Professor Vikram Sarabhai approached the bishop on a Saturday evening. Still, I remember the scene. I still remember the meeting between the two turned out to be a historical. Reverend Father Peter Perra exclaimed, Oh Vikram, you are asking my children's abode, my abode, bishop's house, and God's abode, the church. How is it possible? Both had a unique quality that could smile even the difficult situation, both Reverend Father and the scientists, they can smile. Reverend Father Peter Perira asked Professor Vikram Sarabhai to come to church on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Professor Vikram Sarabhai went to the church again on Sunday with his team. After the prayer was over, the bishop invited Professor Vikram Sarabhai to come to this dais. The Reverend Father introduced Professor Vikram Sarabhai to the mass, the people. What do I do as a preacher? Bishop says. What do I do as a preacher? I pray for you people, for your well-being, for your peace. In short, what Vikram is doing, what I am doing are the same. Both science and spirituality seeks the Almighty's blessing for human prosperity in body and mind. Dear children, Professor Vikram says he would build within a year near the sea coast alternative facilities to what we are having. Now, dear children, can we give the, our award? Can we give my award? Can we give God's award for a great scientific mission? He asked that question. There was a total silence, a pin drop silence like what I'm experiencing now. Then all of them got up and said, Amen, which made the whole church reverberate. That was the church where we had our design center where we start a rocket assembly and the bishop house was our scientist working place. Do you know where Tumba rocket launching station is? Yes, it is in Kerala. After joining Tumba, Kalam went to NASA, USA for a six months training in sound rocket. The person responsible for the growth in Kalam's career was Dr. Vikram Sarabhai. Sometime later, Sarabhai appointed Dr. Kalam as a leader of SLV program. After the untimely death of Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, Dr. Prakash and Professor Davan appointed Dr. Kalam as an in charge of SLV project. I was appointed 
as a project director for the India's first satellite launch vehicle, which will put a Rohini satellite in the orbit. Dr. Kala and his team worked tirelessly to achieve their goal of launching an indigenous satellite of India. Although they failed initially, they continued their efforts without losing heart and succeeded in launching India's own satellite into space on July 17, 1980. Let us say, long live Abdul Kalam with our thundering voices all over the skies. He who made a vehicle to propel the satellite Rohini to the outer space and achieved victory with honor and created a new speed of action. Dr. Kalam was awarded the prestigious civilian award Padma Bhushan in 1981. Mr. Y.S. Rajan he is a close associate of Dr. Kalam. I know and I was fortunate to know our president, Dr. A.P.J. Abdul Kalam, as early as 1965. But SLV-3, there were so many, so many events to make it into a project. It was not an easy job. There are multiple groups, each demanding something. There is ultimate use is to launch, that is the user. But you have to get it from so many people. That is where his par excellence, in fact, his whole base of Dr. Kalam, what he is today, in my opinion, was shaped there. Two and a half minutes before launch, before T0, before liftoff, the SLV-3 got into a problem. Its umbilical, satellite umbilical, was not coming out. It was becoming very, very dangerous. The vehicle was already on the internal battery power. And if it had run like this for another few minutes, then it would have been a wasted experiment. Dr. Kalam, along with the Chief of Safety Systems in DRDO, in um, space, Dr. Kuruk, went to the SLV-3 launch pad and himself standing under the SLV-3, encouraged another worker to climb up on SLV-3, 22 meters climb up, and to physically remove the umbilical and put come down. Now this was a very difficult kind of a decisions to be taken because the whole vehicle was charged, propellants were loaded, and it was slightly risky, unsafe to stand there. But with his encouragement, with his belief in the people, his belief in the technology, his belief in the health of SLV-3, he could go there and get these things done. Dr. Kalam was invited by Dr. Raja Ramana to join the missile launching program at DRDO. In 1982, he became a director of DRDO. The idea of developing and launching India's most successful missiles like Prithvi, Trishur, Akash, Nag was born here at this time. In between, Kalam's long cherished dream of developing Agni missile was also still there. Formally, the process of developing Agni missile was begun in 1983. His approach to his team had been very humane. I still remember there was uh, Mr. Nagaraj who was responsible for electrical integration was there at the range long enough because the flights were being postponed. And at home, his wife, younger, younger brother had died. But she did want to convey this to her husband, thinking that this stress may create a problem in his work for the Agni. You can look at this, that the even family did not convey such a grave incident, which has been so much sad incident, to just to think that this incident may go in the mind of the scientist and he may not be able to concentrate on the work of Agni. That team spirit or that spirit of family he created, and that's why when he, he writes one of his poems that who created Agni? The woman lights the lamp for the success of their husband, their son, their brother. From that light, the Agni came. Agni thundered and made to flower mother's glory throughout the outer space. People in the country praised the warriors 
and lifted their hearts in pride. Compliments and prizes were pouring in from all directions. The President and the Prime Minister of India greeted the success. Dr. Kalam was honored with the award of Padma Vibhushan in 1990. Thereafter, he was appointed as Principal Scientific Advisor to the Prime Minister of India. In 1997, he was awarded India's highest civilian award, Bharat Ratna, by the then President of India. Many universities, including Anna University, Chennai, conferred on him honorary doctorates. He also became the principal scientific advisor to the government of India, which is equivalent to the position of a union cabinet minister. After that, he also worked as an honorary professor at Anna University. I get a feeling we, India is not poor. People thinking is poor, okay? Only our thinking is poor. If we think big, we can also equally become a great country. On 25th July 2002, Dr. Kalam was elected as the President of India. Though born in an ordinary family, Dr. Kalam, through his tireless efforts, hard work, and self-initiative, has contributed in three fields, space research, security, and atomic energy, paving the way for India to emerge as a superpower. Learning, learning, gives creativity. creativity. Learning gives creativity. Creativity, creativity leads, leads to thinking. thinking. Creativity, leads to thinking. creativity leads to thinking. Thinking, thinking provides, provides knowledge. knowledge. Thinking provides knowledge. Thinking knowledge knowledge makes, me makes me great, great useful, useful to my nation. Now, Children, tell me, what do you understand? Anyone can respond. Okay? No, number one. Okay. Le learning, we learning, we gain knowledge. That is, we come to know about the unknown things, that which leads to more creativity in your mind. And uh, knowing new things, we begin to think and we question why. And by more thinking, we gain knowledge and gaining knowledge we become great and make our nation in the past. He has been cultivating the young minds to think and dream about making India great and strong by 2020. He had set the target of meeting at least 100,000 students in a year. But within the first 10 months after he assumed the office, he had met 150,000 students in different parts of India. By April 2005, he has met more than 600,000 students and the meetings continue with great enthusiasm, eagerness and expectations from both sides. If you are not seeing, I will repeat it, www.residentofindia, all in small letters, dot nip, dot nip. Then I will immediately reply to you your questions and as we will share my dream and your dream finally e-governance education and healthcare these three domains which has given a productivity improvement at rashtradhyavan across the nationwide he has taken a nanotechnology initiative and called 40 scientists industrialists academicians 
and all from at Rashtrapati Bhavan in 2004 and get a one day complete brainstorming session and created a road map uh, for the nano science and technology initiative in the country. Today the government is supporting and the government is uh, implementing this program in a big way uh, with the 1000 crore uh, funding allotted for this single mission. And he has come out with a program uh, called Pan-African E-Network connecting 53 nations and providing education and healthcare services. So I was very proud to work with him in implementing and architecting the solutions and along with other government agencies and ministries. And uh, today this pilot program is successful and a number of uh, 22 countries have signed an MOU and the program is on. One single goal which is gone into the people is that we can do it spirit. The spirit of we can do it has been imbibed into the minds of the young citizens and the minds of the people of the country. Dr. Kalam is the most technology savvy president perhaps in the world today. He generally replies all the emails that he received from students and others. I get a feeling the, we must have for next 20-25 years a vision before us that is how the country will become self-reliant in various sectors of life, how we upgrade the life, that is a good life for the nation, how it will come. It can come only by technology. Dr. Kalam has elaborated his idea of India as a great country in his book, India Vision 2020. Mr. Y.S. Rajan is the co-author of the book. An important thing about India 2020, I would like to share with you. When Dr. Kalam and myself used to go in the early days, after 96 when we released, and also after the book was written, 98, the thing will be, sir, can it be done? Are you too ambitious? Can this be done in India? This is one standard thing which uh, Dr. Kalam used to say, so I will, we have put it in the book also. Very important thing is, I, I can see that uh, many of us feel bad because about 100 things which can be done, about 20 only we do, 80 are missed opportunities. So one feels bad about it. But the thing about it, why not we talk about the 20? The successes you talk, success breeds success. Strength gives strength. Strength respects strength. Similarly, success. Each, let us talk about the successes of each. Whatever small, one person managed to keep a lot of trees. Somebody managed to solve a small irrigation problem. Because, you know, often there is a problem. 30 kilometers will come, another 5 kilometers there is a problem. Water doesn't go or some silting is there. Locally people do. To anything, anything to anything towards making it little prosperous, little better, little happier, little more convenient and let us spread the message of success. I think that is very important. The way we got independence, there was a strong, there was a feeling that we can do. And every success was talked. People were not crying over the failures. I think we should develop the culture of celebrating the success. And when a failure takes place, rally around the fellow to support him more to go towards success. If these two are done, why India 2020? We can succeed in anything. That is one message we all have to carry. We have the responsibility. Even though we feel bad sometimes, carry it, keep it and then go towards success, celebrate success and then it should start at the school itself. If somebody has done a good job, good painting, you should say very good. He used to tell, Dr. Kalam used to ask me, sir, why don't you, why not these people, you know, we say in some of the developed countries, you just say when you say hello, oh, you have a nice bright dress, something we say, no, whereas we don't have the habit. We let us talk positive. Let us celebrate success. India 2020 is in hands of all of us to make. A nation where the rural and urban divide has reduced to a thin line. A nation where there is an equitable distribution and adequate access to energy and quality water. A nation where agriculture, industry and service sector work together in symphony. A nation where education with value system is not denied to any meritorious candidate because of societal or economic discrimination.
a nation which is the best destination for the most talented scholars, scientists, and investors. A nation where the best of health care is available to all. A nation where the governance is responsible, transparent, and corruption-free. A nation where poverty has been totally eradicated, illiteracy removed, and crimes against women and children are absent, none in the society feels alienated. A nation that is prosperous, healthy, secure, peaceful, and happy, and continues with a sustainable growth rate. A nation that is one of the best places to live in and proud of its leadership. When I see you, honorable members of parliament, particularly young members, particularly young members, I see in you the eternal spirit of Mahatma Gandhi, Dr. Rajendra Prasad, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, Sardar Patel, Subhash Chandra Bose, Dr. Ambedkar, Abul Kalam Azad, Rajaji, and many great visionary leaders of our nation. Can you also become a visionary leader? Can you also become visionary leaders, putting the nation above yourself? Can you become one of the great ones of India? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can if you and enliven the parliament with leadership for great mission of transforming India into an economically prosperous, happy, strong, and safe nation before 2020. Pura, providing urban facilities in rural areas, is the concept of Dr. Kalam. With a humble beginning, he knows the difficulties of the common man. Hence, he is able to empathize with the problems of the students from rural areas, remote areas, from poorer classes of society. That's why his project, Pura, providing urban am amenities to rural areas, has become a very popular, not only slogan, but a scheme for implementation. The Pura, rather very much taken up to the neighboring villages, about 65 in numbers. Almost all the 65 villages are rain-fed villages. There is no regular irrigation. Periyar Pura envisages four connectivities, namely physical connectivity, electronics connectivity, knowledge connectivity, and if these connectivities are established, naturally, economic connectivity of the villages will automatically go in. We came here for the, on the village Penayam Bati on the behalf of the Pura skin. Here we carried out many activities like connecting medical camps and plantation, providing sanitation or also uh, I'm doing economic survey. In economic survey we identify the person who are affect, most affected and we help them. The pra, the concept which is broomed, which is incubated and hatched out by our, the great, we can say, visionary Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam that really that is that emerged as a real hope for the millions of people in these villages. What you see is aloe vera. Aloe vera is, is it has more medicinal values and it belongs to xerophytic family. Achambati area has very less amount of water, so uh, this plant is mostly suitable for this area. So the villages used to cultivate uh, more and more plants here because uh, of less water and mostly they are exporting this to other uh, cities other cities and foreign companies also so by that they are yielding uh, more amount of we are providing the opportunity to improve themselves by their own efforts he had delivered almost more than 1200 lectures during his five year period and he had integrated all the elements, whether it is a power sector, whether it is a industrial sector, whether it is a rural ministry, he had the vision to tell the rural, rural ministry where all the funding for the rural ministry is coming. He is the only person in the whole government setup could see the linkages and try to bring the focus to the linkages 
so that the country can benefit as a whole. Dr. Kalam is a great lover of Carnatic music. He plays on the veena also. I feel uh, even President of India would have chosen music as the apt way to relax with his stressed up academics. But being a good musician will be evident only by the way they express their attitudes towards music. That way when you consider his swearing in ceremony, the Honorable President of India quoted Sri Tyagaraja's Entaro Mahanu Bhavulu Antiriki Vandanamo during his speech, during the swearing in ceremony. That by itself made the musicians very happy. I was given the script and the president himself as a composer, he announced the Raga Kambodhi, the Tala Adi and the lyric he sang was, I will carry the message now to you. Valamana nada kuvom, Valamana nada kuvom, Ila ulangal poriyetri, Valamana nada kuvom. The meaning of the song, let us make the country rich and fertile in knowledge, universal brotherhood, humanitarian considerations. So, we not only have a patriot, a scientist as the President of India, we also have a great musician, a great music composer and a connoisseur of music. Mr. Kalyanam, Mahatma Gandhi's personal secretary, respects Dr. Kalam in high esteem. I used to hold exhibitions on Mahatma Gandhi in the ground floor of my flat here. I worked with Mahatma Gandhi for nearly five years as his personal secretary. I wanted a true Gandhian to inaugurate the exhibition. And I thought the only person who could inaugurate the show in India was Dr. Abdul Kalam. I hold him in very high esteem. He is as great as Mahatma Gandhi. A man of simplicity, man of integrity, a man of intelligence, and he wants to improve the conditions of the people in the country. So I thought there could be no better person than Dr. Abdul Kalam. Now we have got a president who is the darling of the masses, who wants to do a lot for the country. There is no equal to him in this country today. The only equal I can think of is Mahatma Gandhi. That is the kind of man we have got at the hem of affairs today.
my main aim is how do we how do, how do we make the nation accelerate the nation to become a developed india economically developed india with a value system this is what wherever i am finally i'll be working in that area also i want to see the self confidence in the young people that one can do it if there is self confident comes the individual citizens the nation will be self confident okay we can do it so this is for, for this what uh, my aim my goal of life now india is in the hands of young citizens like you you have to work hard and realize the dreams of this great leader good morning ladies and gentlemen i am indeed delighted to be with the honorable uh, members of the european parliament on the occasion of the golden jubilee year of the european union i am reminded of the dream of a indian poet kanian pungundranar who articulated in 3000 years back in tamil classic purananur he says yadum ure yavarum kelir which means i am a world citizen every citizen is my own kith and kin he said 3000 years back as you say in india where there is righteousness in the heart where there is righteousness in the heart there is beauty in the character when there is beauty in the character there is harmony in the home when there is harmony in the home there is harmony when there is an order in the nation when there is order in the nation there is peace in the world Mr. President Abdul Kalam, in the name of the European Parliament, I want to thank you for this important and inspiring speech. This was one of the most extraordinary speeches we have ever heard. From a statesman scientist and poet this is unique all the best to this great nation india all the best to our cooperation between the great nation india and the european union all the best mr president he will always say come on leave the fear and agony into the air that is the thing we can all succeed provided we are ready to be continuously doing on the action all well wish you all a very happy life prosperous life and a successful life keep on working keep on in action that's the message from dr kalam and many others who have achieved like that all the best if you are to be great if the nation has to become great we have to think big okay we have to think big what a great person dr kalam is his story really inspires me more to do good things i'll cross the barriers and do something good for the society if you are determined to your goal you will cross the barriers and achieve your goals hmm. how was your day I have kept some snacks and orange juice for you. Sundar. Okay, you finished your homework very fast. Very good. 
ओके ओके यू कैन वॉच कार्टून चैनल इफ यू वॉन्ट ग्रांडपा ओ ही स्टिल एंग्री विथ मी ही विल बी ऑल राइट इन वन और टू डेज Is it? Really huh? Just still angry with me? <laughs> <laughs> he is very adamant. No, he is very determined. We must understand him correctly. Hmm. What should I do? Allow him to teach Muthu and Lakshmi. <sighs> Maybe he is right. Perhaps I am wrong. I miss you so much. I can't control myself. I'll speak to you tonight. Sundar, Sundar, look here. Now you'll surely talk to me. Mom, Mom, you're really great. we should never give up on the contrary we should pursue with vigor and ensure that we defeat the problem rather than being defeated by the problem come on the ignited mind or ignited soul is more powerful compared to any resource on the earth above the earth and under the earth
RCG launched its flagship brand, Classic Polo, in 2001, February 14th. And today is a proud owner of four strong brands, Classic Polo, Smash, Swiss Club, and Zero Press. Classic Polo is also the proud recipient of the Best Brand of the Year Award instituted by CMAI. The RCG Group continues its journey towards excellence, a journey that will make the Classic Polo brand the most preferred premium casual menswear in India by 2010. As per Dr. Kalam's wish, we, the young ignited mind, have created Pura, providing urban facility at rural area in a village called Vagara near Palani, Tamil Nadu, have created 2,000 employment opportunity for women. We wish this Little Dream project to be a grand success and it should be at the every family household and should ignite the individual young minds. Jai Hind. TPS is one of the youngest of 4,500 crore amalgamation group. TPS is ready to offer a range of products for a variety of applications. We'll manufacture batteries for UPS, rural telecom, defense, solar power, emergency, lighting system, alarm system, electric vehicle, etc. While the future generations will identify Dr. Abdul Kalam as a rocket man who put India on the space exploration map of the world, we have seen him besides as a president who gave new dimension to its role in focusing on the youth to build a new India, an economic superpower to reckon with. For this, he exhorted the youth to dream big and strive to achieve the vision. He is the only person who connects with young minds perfectly and addresses the crucial issue of transforming the large youth population into a real human capital, globally relevant and competitive. A man of his stature, steeped in scientific temper above all religious predilections, magnanimous and simple in outlook, created an aura compelling day-to-day -day attention. No wonder he is revered by the entire world at large as an extraordinary phenomenon.